Hello again. I think I've touched on intersecting edges in the past, but I think it's worth a quick one on its own, so to speak. We'll begin by taking a quick look at the scene. We have a tube cutter, as I've called it here, which is basically a box. Now I'm going to instance this box. I'm going to turn this off from the preview and renderer. And finally, we have a plane here, and this is where the intersecting edges will take effect. We'll deal with the instances first. Select the tube cutter object here. We'll go to item, add, clone, and you'll see under there clone instance. Hit P for properties to bring up the instance generator. This is what we have. We'll just put it in wireframe view for now. And over in type, we'll select a rectangular array. I have far too many that I need here, but I do want some overlapping, so I'm going to have a play around with some of the settings. All I've done is reduce the spacing uh, and giving it some random sizing and some offsets here. That's it for the instance generator for now, so we can close that down. Time to deal with the intersecting edges. Let's take a look at VPR, see what's going on. Okay, so let's turn off my background plane. Uh, and let's turn off all the lights as well, and I'm going to items. Let's add a new ambient light. So that's cool, we got a nice flat lighting for everything now. And now is as good a time as any to mention the fact that this technique with the intersecting edges only works under VPR. Okay, so let's select the plane and press P for properties. Now we need to go to the edges tab and we need to select intersection edges. And we'll give it a radius of something like 30 pixels so we can see what we're doing. And we'll turn on a surface shaded so it takes into account what's going on in the surface editor rather than this color here. Obviously we can't see anything at the moment because the instances are in the way. So we'll go over to the tube cutter object, not the instance object, the tube cutter object. And we'll also activate the intersection edges for that object as well. And just to see what's going on here, let's make this slightly larger, 10 pixels, and let's make them red. We can still see these instances and we don't want that. So we'll go over to the render tab and we'll want to tick unseen by camera and neither do we want it to cast or receive shadows. Okay, that's a good start, but as you can see, we can see the intersecting edges of the instances themselves, which we don't want. So let's go over to the primitives under intersection edges on the tube cutter object where it says 10 pixels, we will now say zero pixels. So that, that effectively has turned it off. So we're now just seeing the edge intersections on the plane object. So it says 30 pixels at the moment. Let's give it a minus number. Let's see, 02. And this effectively puts it into 3D space, slightly larger. Now we could keep this on the surface like this, but I just want to see the tube. So similar to the tube cutting object, I'm going to go over to the renders tab and I'm going to unseen by camera. And again, turn off the self shadows. So that alone is looking quite nice, but let's add some form or some varying sizes to these tubes. So back into the primitive tab under edges, we're going to edit notes. Click on that little box there. And remember we're on the plane object here. So click on the edit nodes. Now you could use any texture you like on here, but for this, I'm going to use the Arman Collect 2D texture pipes. I'm basically going to put my pipes <laughs> over some pipes. Let's have a quick look at the settings. So I want black and white, 100%. And I'm gonna take the color and I'm gonna take that into the intersection edges taper. So I've already got something quite interesting, but the scale looks a little bit too small there. Let's increase that. Now currently where it's 100% white, that will be my 0 0.03 meters width and where it's black would be black. So let's make it not black. Let's make it a little bit gray. So now we've got some shorter tubes. We may have to nudge positions around so you don't get funny little overlaps like that. That works really nicely, especially when it's sort of in the background a little more. So how would we texture this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply select the pipes and I'm going to copy it. Shift click on the pipe to bring up the surface editor. It's called default in this case. Let's click on the nodes and paste the pipes in. Taking the color into the color, 
they should marry up exactly with what you've just set. Here we go, so there's the little pipes. There are the big pipes, just to be clear. But you may not want that uniformity. It's, it's a nice idea just to sort of offset them so you've just got a bit of variety or however you want to play that. A nice thing to remember going back to the instances, turn it off from the preview, is that all this is pretty procedural. So if you want to change settings, uh, just go ahead. And obviously this plane here could be swapped out for a model. But if you wanted to model in layout, which would be lovely. <laughs> because the settings are already there, just duplicate and move around to suit. 